All right, guys. So it's Nanatsuno Taizai season two, episode ten review. I am early this week because I'm not sick. All right, I got work to do, but screw that. Let's do some anime. All right, so let's get serious. Bam! What's up? Like this guy has gone through some stuff. Like this, he has a story. Like I was watching the episode and I was like, oh damn, man got it tough. Like you know, then big whoop. So you were a giant and never wanted to kill people. Ban had no choice, you know, like he was rejected from day one. And guys, I won't lie, this episode touched me in more ways than one. <laughs> I can't like I understood a lot that Ban was not the type of person that was accepted very often. But I never knew it really went deep into his childhood. Because I'm an anime only watch, I don't I don't read a manga, I don't know these things, but now that I've gotten into the episode, you know, like, I'm starting to look differently at things because I'm starting to see just how deep Ban is as a character. There's a lot of space and a lot of time for a lot of character development with Ban. I'm not personally saying that, you know what, let's make him fun and loving and have everyone love him. No. Because he's gone through a lot so far, you know what I mean? Look at how small he was and look at how big he is right now. Like, he's naturally just a very big guy and back then he seemed so tiny. And look at him right now, he's not so angry, he seems a lot more secluded, he seems a lot quieter, he seems a lot more to himself. And I got the feeling, especially from the Helene flashback, that he was not really popular among people. I never knew why. I guess that was just like the other scenes where they had some quirk and, you know, people never liked them or were jealous of them. But I'm starting to see that it followed into his childhood. And I can't even say that those people who treated him so badly as a kid, sending him out to steal and everything, was his actual parents because he looks nothing like them. And the way they treat him seems to be like he's just a slave to them. I mean, with a childhood like that, it must have been very rough. I mean, he never even knew how to say thank you. Guys, I grew up with people telling me thank you before I could even talk. And that's how I see other kids getting grown up. And he never even knew how to say thank you. He only knew how to swear and to say bad things. So he wasn't the way he is for his own reason. You know, he never chose this life. It was given to him. And I'm very... I am moved, guys. Like, I am really moved by how he accepted Zivago. Like, Zivago never even knew that it was Ban he was talking to all this time. But... Well, I can't blame him. I never knew it was Zivago all along. <laughs> Until the episode took a turn for the worse where his son was in danger and he had to choose between Ban and his son. And I loved what Ban said. Ban said he never held a grudge at him. A grudge against him? Yeah, he never held a grudge against him. Not now, not ever. And that if he had abandoned his son just to save him, he would never forgive him for it. And I mean, that touched me. That touched me a whole lot. I mean, Ban is... Ban was one of my favorite characters all along because of what I heard about him. Not what I heard from my friends who read manga. What I heard from those in the anime say, and what he himself said. Especially once when he was with Elaine and he said that, you know what? Many people don't get him, but Elaine does like... I don't know, guys. Like, Ban so far is my favorite character. He seems more dynamic. He seems to have a lot more levels to him than just the plain old Ban that you see in front of you. And I think that going forward... I don't know, I don't read I don't read the manga guys, but I think going forward he has a lot of space for like, the character development. I said that before, but I also think that going forward his potential as a character to really connect with fans I think is very huge. I don't know who the most popular scene is. I think it would be Melia that's you know, because he's a protagonist and whatnot, he's the strongest and captain and blah blah blah. But I do think that Ban has a lot of space to connect with characters. Because you see, the thing about a lot of anime guys, and this is something we have to look into, is that most characters, even though they're weak and even though they're strong, it's the character behind the character that really gets people. So if you look at a character like Itachi, Itachi is very strong, but that's his character in the actual anime. But for Itachi, for who he is, is what people love. You know, the person who loves his family, goes all out to protect his brethren, even sacrificing himself, that's that selflessness. I think that's what people really connect to with Itachi. Not per se the guy who killed the Uchiha clan, 
but the guy who saved Sasuke and who saved the Leafless. So, you know, there are two ways to look at a character, and I think that's what people connect to, and I think this is why Ban has a lot of space for development, a lot of space to be loved by the fandom. Like I said, I don't know who is the most popular, but I guess it's uh, Melodes. I think Escanner is up in there because everywhere I go, see Escanner this, Escanner that. That's how it's pronounced. Um, speaking about being loved, it's another thing with how Zivago raised Ban. Raising like he was his own kid. I mean, Ban left, felt left out, he felt rejected. And Zivago was there not to love him like, you know, the love with Dove. Oh, my son, you're so special, you can do anything. No. But just to show him that there's someone who's there that's you know that cares about him wants to help him and when he said to ban that you should never trust humans it's something that really connected to me because normally you tell your kids to be the best you can be and stuff like that and here Zivago is telling them the exact opposite when you look into the story that you've been told up until that point you realize that it's the best advice you could ever give them and looking back in retrospect I think it was the best advice because even now Ban doesn't even get along with all the sins. You know? I know Mel just accepts him and that's why he's there, but who else? Not many people really love him that much. Even King. King is like his best friend, but King is such an asshole. And I'll get to King in a minute. So I think like I could have done without the last part of this episode, you know, with King and the train and stuff like that, because the first part the first eleven, twelve minutes was just was just so good. It was excellent. It was like everything that I would want in an episode. And then we get to King. Like, the guys are training, Gil Thunder making gains, good for him. Well, yeah, Hauser. What did Hauser do all episode? I never did see Hauser come to think of it. But Gil Thunder making gains, but my gosh, King. <laughs> Shit just got real. What a bitch, what is I don't like this guy. All of a sudden I don't like King. Like, how can you attack your Okay, first off he doesn't forgive Dreyfus without even knowing what happened. Like, let's be honest guys. Let's be honest about this. Fairy King or not, if Fraudlin had tried to take over King, he would not have been able to stop it. And you guys can go and check the review that's gonna pop up in the card right now. I said that there's no forgiving Dreyfus because it's not Dreyfus, it's Zarathus. Yeah, it's Dreyfus, it is Dreyfus, Zarathus. Anyway, I was, I was saying that there's no forgiving him because of what he did. And then the episode afterwards, I'm like, well, damn, forgiven. Because, I mean, many of says it's unforgivable, but for me, it's forgivable. I mean, anyone would have fallen prey to that. And it's not like he gave himself up. He resisted, he tried not to, but he just wasn't strong enough. I mean, it's a Ten Commandments. Not many guys are strong enough to resist them. And here King is not even trying to hear the story and saying, oh, I don't forgive him. And because of that fucking reason, he doesn't want to train. Who does that? Why don't... Like, like I don't get what logic that makes. And to make matters worse, he goes and attacks Melodes because Melodes is associated with the demon clan. Did Melodes choose to be associated with the demon clan? I don't think so. And did he try to hear what Melodes has to say? I don't think so either. So you can't attack a captain like that. Guys, if you and I are best friends, and you do something really fucked up, you know, like, I have the right to be angry. But if I think you did something that you shouldn't do, I can't get angry at you for that. And that's basically what this emotional little bitch is doing. Like, I don't even like this guy so much anymore. I mean, prior to this episode, I kind of liked him, you know. He was so soft, and he seemed like the kind of guy that could get strong to protect his friend. But fuck that, he's just... I don't know, he just wants the end and that's it. Fuck him. You know what, guys? I think I'm starting to rant. I don't like to rant because I start to swear so much. Uh, YouTube has policies against that, but I don't care. But you know what, guys? Um, I think that's it for the review. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, go ban screw king.